Matchbox 20 along with Bruce Springsteen our Monday night artist tonight you look at Cincinnati which is all lit up this evening to show off the Queen City Bengals almost got back to within three of the Patriots however an interception late in the half changed things Cincinnati gets the ball first trailing 17 7 as we wrap up week four of the NFL season we'll hear from Michelle Tafoya and Susie Kalber on the sideline in a minute Mike Tirico Ron Jaworski Tony Kornheiser up here in the booth We'll see if Carson and Chad got things ironed out at halftime. I'm sure they went behind <laughs> closed doors and talked about it. Mike, isn't it? <laughs> they didn't leave the field uh, like they were real happy with each other. Deep kickoff by Gostowski. No return by Holt. Here's the play in question. There's no question when Carson Palmer saw the safety go to center field. He had the one-on-one -on -one route. Asante Samuel on Chad Johnson. He expected the in route. He did not get it. That's where the breakdown was communication. Chad goes over the top. Asante Samuel reads the route, jumps inside, makes a terrific interception. You'll see Palmer right here. He's expecting a slant route. He does not get it because Johnson went over the top. But excellent job by Asante Samuel reading what Carson Palmer wanted to do. Clearly a communication breakdown between Palmer and Johnson. Palmer made, or Samuel making his second start. Comes up with his second INT of the season, 18 on his career and first down begins with Palmer pressured getting rid of it incomplete here's Susie well in regard to that play that Jaws was analyzing Carson and Chad left the field analyzing it quite passionately and by the time they got to the tunnel Chad was arguing his point he was adamant I know what the play was I know how to run it so Jaws as the quarterback had he settled something like that well it's very difficult you know because Chad did not read it the same way uh, that Carson read it so clearly you have to see the defensive coverage with the same eyes once again they didn't at some point you got to draw a line in the sand and go forward because it's 17 7 you get the ball next Palmer looks Johnson's way comes to Hushman Zada who broke open TJ gets the first down at the 32 yard line pickup of a dozen in front of Eugene Wilson so the big Bengals stars just four catches for Johnson and Hushman Zada they had 54 catches combined in the first three games of the regular season so a little bit under production but as you would expect against an always well schooled Patriots defense. And Kenny Watson taking all the carries but one with Rudy Johnson out with a strained hamstring and Jarvis Green comes in to make the tackle. The Patriots have done a real nice job, Mike, of trading pressure with their down four linemen. You see him cave the pocket right here. Adelius, Adelius Thomas with the sack. Palmer on a rollout. Pressure in his face once again. Incomplete. Once again, mush rush. Compress the pocket. People around Carson Palmer. Second down in the pocket with time to the tight end, Richie Kelly. Across midfield with Adelius Thomas in coverage. First down, Kenny Watson threw a nice block for protection. So what's interesting about this is even if Carson Palmer is having a bad night, he's about two passes away from having a touchdown <laughs> at any right. time. Because <laughs> he's a very, very good quarterback. And he has outstanding wide receivers and a big sure. play right there from Reggie sure. Kelly, who's only caught three balls coming into this game. That was a huge reception. After the gain of 21, back in Patriots territory, Watson tries to get to the edge, keeps the play alive. Good nifty run by Kenny Watson. Flag down. Antonio Chapman was blocking. Holding offense number 83. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. And while blocking, he was holding. Again, Chapman, the third wide receiver. Tad Perry, Glenn Holt, Skyler Green all in the mix, and nobody's been able to fill the bill the way Chris Henry did. There's Rudy Johnson on the sideline. A lot of fits and starts on the Cincinnati offensive line with different injuries. Levi Jones did start tonight. Hobbled off the field in the first half. Andrew Whitworth, who started the first three regular season games, back in the lineup. First and 17. You heard everybody else scream. There's Watson into the waiting arms of Teddy Bruschi at midfield, getting all but one of the penalty yards back. Yeah, it's probably fair to say when we concentrate a lot on the Patriots' offense and how great it's been, 
They're number one in total defense after three games, number two in passing defense, number three in scoring defense, number five in rushing defense. So they're great on both sides. <laughs> I mean, you know, Palmer's really going to have to light it up to, to beat them. I'm sure that sounds obvious, but, but they are that good. You have to have a great night against them. On both sides of the ball. Yeah. You're right, Tony. Palmer throwing for Chapman on the sideline, incomplete. You know, it was interesting talking to Bill Belichick yesterday about how he decides his game plan. Each week, it is a different game plan. And there's no question tonight, it was a coverage-based defensive game plan. They're rushing four down linemen or a linebacker, only bringing four, keeping seven in coverage. That's the ultimate respect when you have T.J. Hoosman Zada yep. and Chad Johnson at the wide receiving core. Some teams don't have the ability with their personnel to change the game plan week to week. Oh, they have versatile personnel. There's no question of that up in New England. Daniel Coates, rookie tight end, is the motion man. Palmer looks to him. He couldn't hang on. And the rookie out of BYU with the drop brings the punting unit on for Cincinnati. So a couple of first downs. They gain 30 yards on the drive, but they kick it away in part because of this. Yeah, tough catch for Daniel Coates. So it would have been short of the first down. But what you hope for is that Teddy Bruschi might miss a tackle and Daniel Coates could get for uh, get up field for another 10 yards. Kyle Larson will try to pin the Patriots inside the 20. Flag down, pick 37, Welker fair catch to 13. And we'll check the marker. Mike, you know, we talked about the impact of uh, the loss of linebackers. Get right to it in a second here. The impact is on special teams. A lot mm -hmm. of teams love to use their backup linebackers on special teams. Illegal formation, kicking team. Number 16 did not line up on the end of the line of scrimmage. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. When Holtz came in to help protect, didn't get himself up on the line. Back in Cincinnati, 17-7. The Patriots looking to go 4-0 on this 07 season. Kyle Brady, the backup tight end, is in there to block. Trying to block for Sammy Morris. No gain. Chased down by Domita Peko, and here's the show. Well, guys, I spoke with Bill Belichick at halftime, and he told me that Cincinnati has shown its explosiveness. He told his team at halftime, we have to remain focused on every single play. And referring to Tom Brady's interception, just his second of this season, Belichick said, since his defense is turnover-driven, we have to take better care of the football. Mike? Michelle, he made a point to his team during the week that Cincinnati's defense last four years leads the NFL in forced turnovers. Kevin Falk the back to Bart Gaffney as a receiver. And the pass is caught by Falk. He's three yards shy of the first down. Sammy Mars in for Lawrence Maroney. A scratch tonight with a groin injury. And you look at the numbers for Brady. Solid except for the pick. Moss catching the one yard touch, the seven yard touchdown. And Mars not only 13 carries, one big one in there for 49 yards on the first touchdown drive. He also carried eight consecutive times on the drive that was capped off by the Randy Moss touchdown. Falk pitching it to Wes Welker on the reverse with a ton of blockers on this side. Welker keeps it alive and gets past midfield for a first down. Brady threw a block on that. How about that, Joss? Did you ever throw a block? Were many, many, many. I knocked a lot of guys out of bounds with my blocks, Tony. <clears throat> Gain of 27 <laughs> yards for the very versatile Welker. And not just Brady getting in the way, but Russ Hochstein as well, the right guard. Actually, Brady tried to throw a block. He missed it. He missed it, but he did try. Yeah. You got to give him credit for that. Excellent call by Josh McDaniels, the offensive quarter for the Patriots. You know, in that situation, you're going to have a fast, slow defense. He countered it. You saw the versatility that Welker has shown against the Patriots before. Now Brady goes back up top to Randy Moss to the 31-yard line. First down in a game of 16. 
What Brady can do now is personal foul. Flag down. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 98. Blow to the head of the quarterback. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run. First down. The flag on Brian Robinson will bring the Patriots into the red zone at the 16. And you'll see the late hit right to Tom Brady's face. Brian Robinson flagged for the foul, but I was saying right now Brady can become surgical in his approach. He's got the running game going. He's got the linebacking core of the Bengals in disarray. The play action can be very effective now. It'll hold the linebackers. It'll open up voids behind those linebackers. Started the night with four healthy ones. The numbers have not improved. Jimmy Marsh to the 10-yard line. Here's Susie. Mike, this defense could be tired. Unprecedented injuries to the Bengals linebacking core. The bad run began in training camp, continued through tonight. Back up, Lamar Marshall knocked out on the first series, a left Achilles. He will not be back. Remember, only four linebackers dressed for this game. And then in the second quarter, the only starter to dress, Landon Johnson, taken to the locker room with an eye injury. He's questionable. Marvin Lewis didn't seem all that concerned, but he did expect Landon to be back, and he's still in the locker room. He's in the run here inside with Morris goes nowhere. We'll have third down coming up and Jaws as we were looking at the start of this quarter. We saw Robert Gathers make the play. He was lining up at a linebacker in that very first set of this third quarter. Yeah, and Robert Gathers, one of those defensive ends that occasionally will drop into coverage on their zone blitz scheme. So at least he has some experience of playing that linebacker position. Well, when we were here for the opener against Baltimore, he had eight tackles, a sack, a pick. A pass breakup, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. So he's versatile, so yeah. why not? And, a, and a pick was down the field, people. Mm -hmm. Get a first down at the six. Ball pushing forward in the arms of Justin Smith, getting very close to that first down. We'll check the spot. You see in, in this drive, Welker had that big run on the reverse, and Moss caught a pass for nice yardage. What is it about putting on the Patriot uniform that makes you, like when you put on the Yankee uniform, in the old days when John Wooden coached UCLA, when you put on the UCLA uniform, it takes players from other places who have been good, they, they're better here. Yeah. They're better. Well, th there's a reason for that, Tony. This is a single-minded organization. Their objective is to win football games. They don't care about a lot of the peripheral things that affect other teams. They get players that want to play well, football, that love the game that of football. On that line, they are not not sentimental they are cheap sometimes they get rid of people lawyer Malloy Ty Law Willie McGinnis Adam Vinatieri David Gibbons Dion Branch and what happens they still win because the players that come here they are ready to win a foot and a half needed they'll go for it you agree with this guy yeah I agree with you but well, remember this, Tony, the average career in the National Football League is about three and a half years. So there's a natural attrition in personnel anyway, but they get rid of guys before they start descending. Moss is up at the top. A run with Sammy Morris. First down, touchdown, New England. Big Benjamin Watson with a strong block to help free Morris for his third rushing touchdown on the season. They ran power to the left side. Matt Light, Logan Mankins, Heath Evans do a great job of clearing the hole for Sammy Morris. Dan Copen was the injured Patriot on that touchdown. We'll step out before the kick. Bumming in Bengal land because they're watching the Patriots put on another clinic drives of 66 65 62 and they're an 81 yard drive Sammy Morris doing a lot of the work 110 yards for Lawrence Maroney uh, scratch tonight with a groin injury the Gostowski extra point is blocked but still finds its way through and it's a 24 to 7 New England lead. Even when Cincinnati blocks a kick, it still goes through. Special teams can't get to break. Jonathan Joseph got a hand on it. Over here in downtown Cincinnati, that 81-yard drive for the Patriots puts them up 17. It's the sixth time in 10 drives New England's gone 80 yards or more, and that includes the kneel-down drive at the end of the half 
So six out of ten times they've gone over 80 yards this year. The league average is 12 percent to start inside the 20 and go all the way for a score. Glenn Holt brought down at the 30. Four yard line. Sports Center 30 and 30. Steve Levy. Michael, thank you. The seventh one game playoff to decide a playoff spot. The Rockies and Padres, they are 6 6 in the ninth inning. Matt Holiday, a key RBI single, also had a key misplay in the outfield. As for NBA news, Amari Stoudemire of the Suns, he'll undergo arthroscopic knee surgery. They're calling it minor. He's expected to be sidelined only two to three weeks. Stay current, ESPN News, Sports Center after football. Mike, back to you. They're called minor, but off the microfracture surgery of a year Greg plus Oden. ago, raises concern in the Valley of the Sun. They called the Greg Oden thing minor before they went in. Now he's out for the whole year. Palmer back to the air. His pass complete to Hushmanzada. First down and again at 10. Of course, Palmer comes off the 2005 season where they won the division, but in the playoff game, his knee was injured. Picked right up last year statistically. Tonight, Hushmanzada and Chad not able to get their normal big numbers. Yeah, and the key is not only the receiving, but the number of yards. They haven't got the explosive play this evening. This guy's on the other side of the ball, you know. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> On first down, back to Kenny Watson. Nice opening for Watson into the secondary. So both backup running backs with the headline guys, Lawrence Maroney and Rudy Johnson, missing. These two running backs have more than held up their end of the bargain. Yeah, Kenny Watson does have some explosiveness. He sees the cutback there, weaving through the defensive line into the second level of the defense. Nice run, good vision. Gain of 16. You see Watson's four yard per carry average. Bengals will be no huddle, you would assume, the rest of the night. Watson gains about three there. You know, even at Penn State, it was before Larry Johnson became a big time runner at Penn State, and then we know what he's done with the Chiefs. But Omar Easy and Eric McCoo, names familiar to college football fans, they were running backs ahead of Kenny Watson. He was in that third down back receiving back type mode there. He's never gotten his chance to be the big guy here in Cincinnati. And we mentioned his best NFL games have been as a backup to Stephen Davis when Davis was hurt in Washington during the second season in the league for Watson. Incomplete for Kelly. Fans want a flag. There's one down, but not down where the pass reception was at the O-line. against Cincinnati and Boger is asking Belichick do you want the penalty or do you want the incompletion personal foul chop block offense number 33 and the right tackle 15 yard penalty replace second down you're wondering how can it be two guys Kenny Watson and Andrew Whitworth that's one of those jaws where if you're engaged up high you can't come down low on a guy and get his legs that is correct Watson we'll right there you see the engagement and Watson comes underneath that is a chop block number 75 Scott Kustra was engaged and you saw Watson chop him down illegal took out Ty Warren's legs a second and long the out for Hushmanzada toe tap at the sideline to get the first down TJ does at the 30. You can't throw the football any better than that. Asante Samuel did a terrific job of reading the route. You see the arc on the football over the outstretched fingers of Asante Samuel. Hujmanzada does a great job of tiptoeing along the sideline, getting the first down for the Bengals. Pretty much a must score situation for the Bengals who got movement at the right tackle spot by Kushka. Offense number 75, five yard penalty, still first down. Junior Seau attacked the line of scrimmage like he was coming on a blitz, then backed out, forcing one of the Bengals' offensive linemen to jump. You'll see with Scott Kustra, number 75, flinched before the snap, blocking on Vrabel. Bengals penalty free in the first half, five flags here in the third quarter. They've looked good running the ball with Watson to the 26-yard line. You know, Tony mentioned a moment ago that the Patriots do have players on their side stopping Cincinnati, good defenders, and it's a Patriot defense of very big names like Seau and Vrabel, Asante Samuel, these 10 picks, but it's a defense that's also missing a couple of big names and still doing a good job. 
Thanks for that breaking news, Tony. You have to have a defense out there, too. <laughs> trying to keep you on your toes. Second down, Palmer throwing. It's complete to Hushmanzada. A couple of yards shy of the first down. Here are some people that are missing. Rodney Harrison is missing. Uh, he's suspended four games, so he comes back this coming week. Richard Seymour has been out six games with a knee injury. You would have thought that the Patriots would be at their most vulnerable early in the season. Not only these two people lost on defense, but all the ramifications of the Spygate issue. You'd have thought they could be beaten early, maybe not late. Well, we're in the fourth game right now, and they look to be a terrific team. Imagine how much better they'll get. Belichick took time out. There were 12 Patriots on the field. Look at that. him. He's in agony. He's winning the game. He's rubbing his head. He's in agony. Wants to win, Tony. He wants to win. They'll be all slathered up, Michael. See you Monday night, 8.30 <laughs> Eastern from beautiful Western New York for the Bills and the Cowboys. It'll be a blast. Third and a couple. Pressure comes. Palmer's pass is tipped as he's knocked down and incomplete. Fourth down field goal attempt coming. Bruski gets in there along with Colvin. Just a terrific job of total blitz, collapsing the pocket, man to man. Oh, oh, wow. Bruski, he got way up there. Bruski coming over the top. Watch this. Bruski leaps into Carson Oof. Palmer, tips the ball. He had. Chad Johnson all alone on the outside would have been the completion of Bruce in here. They what? want them to go for this. Yeah, no, you go they, for the field goal the, here. I'm saying the fans oh. are booing. They were. It doesn't make sense. He's second most accurate kicker in NFL history and the active most accurate kicker in the NFL, Shane Graham. Kind of feels like a Pyrrhic victory on that drive. Not a lot of excitement for that field goal, but it still gets them within two scores. Bill Belichick and the Patriots trying to get a fourth Super Bowl here this year. Uh, trying to get off to a 4-0 start, of course, in the crosshairs of the NFL headlines through the first couple of seasons after the fine by the National Football League. $500,000 for Belichick, quarter of a million dollars for the Patriots organization. The aftermath of the videotaping of the New York Jets defensive coaches signaling in plays. Trying to get that for future use. No competitive advantage was gained by the Patriots of the league with the fine and the draft pick that will be lost coming up for this year. And after the tackle, and the Patriots taking over the 29. Here's Ted Bruski talking to us about the Patriots' approach after the Spygate incident. It is what it is. I think that, you know, Bill has made his statements and he's expressed his disappointment in him, disappointment in the decision on the, on the punishment placed down from the commissioner. All we, all we can do is really move on about it. Because I know one thing, once you win championships in this league, no one can take anything away from you. That feeling I got from all of those three Super Bowls, no one can ever take any of that away from me, no matter what is said. Even though the Patriots' future is the penalty, with the money in the present, and the first round pick if they make the playoffs or a two and three if they do not make the playoffs. A lot of the current players felt the sting with what was said about their accomplishments. Falk to carry, tackled by Dexter Jackson. First down gain of 13. Here's the end of the game now with San Diego, which occurred about three days after the whole Spygate thing broke. You see the players hugging Belichick personally. I asked him the other day as the son of a coach and a coach his whole adult life how he felt about that and he said it was special he doesn't use he doesn't say much and it really touched his heart and it meant a lot to the players as well which we'll get to after this play four receivers and kevin fall and brady with a flag down goes down tom had been sacked only three times all year succumbs to the pressure of a fellow Super Bowl MVP, Dexter Jackson. Offside, defense, number 28, five-yard penalty, replay first down. Helps you get your sack when you start offside. It was Dexter. Slight advantage. As an example of what I was talking about, Mike Vrabel said how much the players put into it and he said but bill puts the most in it was our way of showing him how we feel there are players saying they only win because of this circumstance that was frustrating he didn't like when people said how do you feel about cheating they felt maybe people thought the victories were tainted and they don't feel that way the flag makes it first and five 
And Falk will run to the left and gain another first down at the 47. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Yeah, well, when I conducted that interview with Teddy Bruschi, I asked him, what don't we see in Bill Belichick as we're watching him on the sidelines that you all see that makes you want to follow this guy? Because clearly they're very loyal to their coach. And he said he never strays from what he believes in. He never falls off course. His focus is always there. It's a constant focus on what we have to do the next day, the upcoming challenge, how we meet that challenge and overcome that opponent. So he said when he's leading that strongly, it's hard not to follow. That's why you get so many veteran players who buy into being coached up significantly. Empty backfield with his 14-point lead. Brady's throw over the head of the umpire caught by Benjamin Watson, and he does prefer Benjamin. Three yards shy of the first down. I think part of the piece, though, is that people know that the Patriots, so they feel the Patriots are smarter than the other clubs. They see for many years they're better than the other clubs. And I think that raised the ire of fans and maybe other players because they said, why would the Patriots of all teams have to resort to doing this sort of taping? And I, it, it came crashing down on Belichick's head. It did. Saw the owner, Robert Kraft. With those Super Bowl ring cufflinks. In the 40, Brady quick with those hips opens up to Moss for the first down at the 34-yard line. And we mentioned the fines and the loss of a first rounder. The NFL then asked the Patriots to turn over any documentation they may have had, any files on other things that they may have. And uh, not only did the Patriots do that, the NFL didn't add a further penalty and destroyed all of the yeah. quote evidence unquote that they got. And they made very clear in the commissioner's statement they felt that no competitive advantage was gained because the videotaping was for further use for the Patriots. So that's why the suspension or not the lack of a suspension but the fines the first round pick loss potentially was the penalty. Pass for Dante Stallworth incomplete. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage. It's, uh, it's also good to point out that Robert Kraft gave Bill Belichick a game ball after the San Diego Chargers game. And everybody in that locker room supported that. I wonder, do you think they're tainted, Michael Jaws? Do you think, not that the previous victories are tainted, do you think Belichick's reputation is tainted by this? You know, I, I really don't. I, I think there's a single mindedness that this organization has. It's all about winning for them. I, I, you know, there's going to be people out there that are going to remain skeptical, but I just love the way they approach it. To them, it's all about winning. It's a second down, and here's Brady. Complete to Moss. Try to make his man miss. And he's a couple of yards shy of the first down as the Patriots take it to the 26 yard line. Brady, 18 of 24 passing here tonight. And you'll see Randy Moss singled up on Delta O'Neill. Pushes to the outside. Does a nice job of working back to the outside. Excellent throw by Tom Brady. Throws away from the defender. This will spin down to the end of the third quarter. Fans getting all lathered up for the defense trying to get a third to two stop. And Mr. Cool, Mr. Magazine cover, Mr. Photo spread, just <laughs> strolling all over the fourth Tony's quarter. boy. <laughs> Are you suggesting I have a man crush on uh, Yeah, I am. <laughs> have you seen those photos? <laughs> have you seen the girlfriends? <laughs> Come on. He is the boss of New England sports. To the fourth quarter, Patriots by 14. Tom Brady. Three Super Bowls, three Pro Bowls, one Super Bowl. Dreamy eyes. <laughs> Part of our open tonight from Jamie Foxx. Love wow. that. Dreamy eyes. You gotta love what Jamie Foxx does that. We go to the fourth quarter on the banks of the Ohio River here in Cincinnati. Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Susie Kalber, Michelle Tafoya, Tom Brady. Six incompletions, 150 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Earlier tonight, setting the NFL record for the highest completion percentage in his first 100 passes to start a season at 79%. 32 and a quick snap and a flag down as Sammy Morris is taken down by Anthony Schlegel. And let's check the flag. A second flag comes down. Is too many players? Yep. 12 men, defense, five yard penalty, results in a first down. Now, I understand that you've got only a couple of linebackers and you're moving people around, but you should never, ever, ever 
have a flag like that at the start of a quarter. Yeah, yeah. That's un a a a unbelievable. Three minutes over there to figure out what oh. personnel package would go on. The well, field. is it possible they petitioned no. the league to get an extra guy because they were so <laughs> depleted tonight and they were just waiting for Goodell to say, yeah. okay, play 12. It's okay. Uh, I don't think that happened, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. He, they should petition for 12 tonight. They, they certainly are overmatched right now. A drive that started at the 29, now down to the 21. The man of the gun. Brady's pass is knocked down by jumping Justin Smith. First round pick of 2001. Justin Smith did an excellent job of reading Tom Brady's eyes, much like Tony does. Uh, but he was doing it in terms of where he was going to throw the football. You're just jealous of him because when you were a quarterback, you were on the cover of every magazine in the world. You are correct. What were you on, field and screen once or twice? <laughs> Seen a lot of this out of the Patriots. Only one receiver, and it's Randy Moss. And they throw to him. And Moss takes it to the 13-yard line. Ron, in your film study, you saw a lot of that. Whereas max protection, only one receiver. But that one receiver is hard to cover. Yeah, and that particular play was that smoke that I talked about again. He runs a dart route to the inside. It was a running play called. But once you see the corner, in this case, Delta O'Neill, six or seven yards off, Brady just stands up and throws a quick dart route to Randy Moss. You, know, you can tell they work on this stuff. They really are seeing the defense with the same eyes. And surprisingly, considering the first time we really worked together was opening day. Same formation this time. It's press coverage on the bottom. And the run for Morris is a loss of yardage by Robert Gathers and forces a New England field goal attempt of 35 yards. Huge play by Robert Gathers right there. He's been playing tackle. He's been playing and he's been playing linebacker. That was huge right there to force this field goal attempt for the Patriots. Gathers yeah, who came up with several big plays in the week one win against Baltimore and <laughs> to this point we're getting close to the end of business here tonight. It's the only win of the season for the Bengals. Kostowski officially 36. Bangs another one through. And they could have lost that game as well because Baltimore had the ball inside the five for about eight plays late to tie. 365 days ago. This was the Pats' place of work as well. New England visited here. The Bengals losing to New England on that night, 38 to 13. Right now it's 27 to 10. With 13 minutes left to see if Cincinnati can mount a comeback. Glenn Holt from the six. Brandon Merriweather, the first round pick out of Miami of Florida as part of the tackle process at the 20 yard line. Those of you just tuning in, here's what's happened tonight. Brady has been pretty sharp. One pick, but two touchdowns. Randy Moss bringing in one of them. And that gave New England a 17-7 lead and answered after Cincinnati had come down the field to score. And in the absence of Lawrence Maroney, Sammy Morris has a 100-yard game for the third time in his NFL career. His career high is 110, twice in his second year as a Redskin against Houston and Seattle. Tonight, 105. And Palmer on first down back to the air behind Chad Johnson off his hands and incomplete. So we talked about the game here a year ago. Marvin Lewis, his team since then, threatening to fall to 6 and 11 if they lose this game tonight. Not just 6 and 11, but then 1 and 6 in the last seven, lost their last three last year. People wonder if he's in trouble. He's not in trouble here. They fill the seats. Before Marvin Lewis, there were a million empty seats here, and they never got anywhere near 500. They were 4-12 and 12 on average for five years before Marvin Lewis. He gave these people hope where there had been none, but he's got to give them a defense if they're going to actually contend for anything. Well, time for Palmer. The pass is caught. Out of bounds to tight end Reggie Kelly. Three catches in the first three games. Two here tonight. That one was 20 yards. Reggie Kelly coming up with some outstanding catches tonight. As I said earlier, came into this game with only three catches. But since the Patriots are double covering Hoosman Zada and Chad Johnson, it's leaving the one-on-one -on -one coverage to Reggie Kelly, and he is responding positively. Don't you think they miss a presence of a third receiver? 
Like uh, Chris Henry? Yep. Suspended for eight games. Bruce Manzada taking that at the 45 yard line. No, you mentioned the reputation of Marvin Lewis as a guy who very successful defensive coach. So why is the defense not come as quickly here? Well, uh, many things have contributed. Let's start with number one. He inherited an offense. So you build around Carson Palmer, you invest your money in Hushman Zada, Rudy Johnson, Chad Johnson, a couple of tackles. And so that's a lot of what they've done. And it's paid great dividends winning the division two years ago. Here's Chad making James Sanders miss and getting a first down at the 42 yard line. The fans want a flag for a late hit or an out of bounds hit. None forthcoming. So it'll be Chad's third reception to move the chains. So what do they do on defense to try to build? Let's watch the play again. Chad right here getting pushed out of bounds. And a little extra push over there from Brandon Merriweather as he was beyond the white line on the sideline. I would say Merriweather got away with one there. Should have been a flag. Was not. And there is a flag here on the Bengals for a false start. And the frustrated fans. All-star. Offense. Number 77. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Taking it out on the other guys wearing stripes here tonight. So listen, guys, here's what they've tried to do. They try to build through the draft through defense, but what happened? David Pollock hurt his neck last year, hasn't played, likely not to play again. Odell Thurman, the suspension that he has had, which was continued by the league all the way through this season. Jonathan Joseph is playing. Frosty Rucker, defensive end, has not seen the field to this point with a hamstring injury this year. Leon Hall had an interception tonight. Palmer almost throws a pick there. As Eugene Wilson from the free safety spot was coming to get it. So to try to add to that defense via the draft, it hasn't worked out, and now it's starting to have an effect of this team has to outscore people. Well, it really hurts you when your two top picks in 2005 are not on the field. One with an injury and one with a suspension. We've talked about character issues a lot. They've tried to get beyond that, but there still is a carryover with Thurman and with Henry on offense. 45, Palmer's pass is a six-yard game. To Hushman's on at the 39 yard line. We'll have third down coming up, third about eight. The Patriots secondary is doing an outstanding job. They are like Velcro on these Bengal wide receivers. They're catching the football, immediately being tackled. You're seeing almost zero yards after the catch. Big down for Carson Palmer right here at third and eight. Oh for five on third down on the Bengals. Chad Johnson trying to win a battle to get to the spot. Ellis Hobbs was keeping it from getting there. That's why the uh, Bengals want a flag and they're not getting it there. Fourth down, they'll go for it. Ellis Hobbs does a real nice job of just getting his hands on Chad Johnson and undercutting the route. And Chad Johnson does a nice job the last minute, basically knocking the ball away. Ellis Hobbs almost comes up with the interception. Go for it here, Paul. Well, they're down by 17. Fourth and eight. They need a play. <laughs> Patriots are loaded with defensive backs on the field. Palmer, time, throws, held on to. And the first down maintained by Hushman Zada, who is a very tough receiver. Zuraj. Bushman Zada, TJ, the first and last letters of his first name. First down. Bushman Zada does a great job of working back to Carson Palmer. He's got the coverage on top. He works back and snags the ball, plucks it out of the air, shows those strong hands. And a quick shot to Bushman Zada. The first round pick, Merriweather, wraps him up. Loss of a couple of yards. Susie? Well, Mike, you know, in just the last hour before kickoff, TJ and Carson were still reviewing the game plan and making sure they were on the same page. They were still adding wrinkles in this afternoon's walkthrough. And TJ said it's never too late to make sure we're seeing the same things, hearing the same things, and it's time like this when it really pays off. And Carson and Chad, uh, in addition to TJ, were all very positive about their game plan. The Bengals had a really good feeling about what they had on paper against the Patriots. But on this turf, the Patriots are better than what was on the paper. <laughs> yeah. Especially that first quarter. Uh-huh. Palmer hit as he throws high for Chad Johnson, incomplete. 
It was third down coming up. It was Ty Warren's pressure that may have forced the throw to be high. See, here's what you want to say here, that the T.J. Hushmanzada came into this game after three games, number one in the league in catching. They came in as a group, number two overall in passing, lots of points. They, could, they are being sabotaged by their defense, but more than that, they're being beaten by a better team. I mean, New England is apparently this good because Cincinnati is a good team. These are not, those are not false numbers coming in here. And there you had Chad Johnson open, but Ty Warren had the pressure on Carson Palmer, forced the Aaron throw. Third and ten from the 30. It's a five-man rush. Palmer has to go out of the pocket to throw, not his comfort zone, and Chapman can't hang on. So they did everything but hold on to the ball. And you know what, Tony? I know what you're saying on the reputation with the Bengals, but how good is this team? Well, it, it, it's a totally incomplete team. Their defense is, is dragging them down. The offense, however, if you come in with Hushmanzada and Johnson, Johnson number one in yardage after three games, Hushmanzada number one in total catches after three, at least offensively, you would think they'd be able to put up 25 to 30 every game and they're getting 10 at the moment they didn't last week in Seattle either this is a 48 yard field goal attempt from Shane Graham you need a field goal some way along the way to complete the comeback and Graham hooks it in uh, impressive solid leg from 48 for that one 27 13 the lead is 14. The New England Patriots play the juggernaut that is the Cleveland Browns next week. How about the Browns? And after you watch the Browns in the division play a 51-45 shootout with Cincinnati, you say, well, maybe an aberration, maybe Cincinnati's defense. But then when they score 24 in the first half against Baltimore yesterday, well, maybe Cleveland's going to be around into October and November as a factor in this division this year. Yeah, and Derek Anderson certainly has stabilized their offense. Deep kick, Ellis Hobbs, who had the 108-yard kickoff return against the Jets, feeling greedy and good about taking it out from inside the 20. That was, uh, was taken seven yards deep in the end zone and only brought out to the 15. Tom Brady, that magic look has been working once again for the pass. There have never been more people at a Bengals home game. 66,113, a franchise record here tonight to see the Patriots looking to go 4-0. And throwing up 14. Randy Moss with the grab at the 35-yard line. It's made a 20-yard gain, 19-yard gain look really simple. And a frustrating night for Justin Smith and the Bengals. <laughs> It's a weird feeling game. It feels like nine on seven out there, doesn't it? Seems like our games never work, does it? Mm -hmm. Our games never work. We're getting good, pretty good pressure, though. Yeah. We, ain't, we ain't sacking them. Draws nine on seven reference to practice. Practice where there's nine offensive players and only seven defensive players. Obviously, advantage offense. Continuing to throw, covered deep. Brady checks it down and completes it to Sammy Marsh. Has had a huge game, stiff arm across midfield to take Hernandez Jones to the 46. And the games are talking about the twist with a defensive lineman. He was talking with John Thornton, and here's Susan. Yeah, Mike, here's the sad commentary about the Bengals. It's stated by their defensive captain, John Thornton. He said, we don't respond well to adversity. When we play bad, we are really bad. And maybe it's just because some of these young guys need to learn that in the NFL, you have to fight through the tough times. And often some of the guys on this team, when they get down, they really get down in the dumps, and they just can't recover. Yeah, Thornton pointed at his time in Tennessee when the Titans were moving around and they responded to adversity. And it has become a recurring theme for the Bengals. Guys are hurt and this and that. Oh, up 14, they throw and it's deflected out of Brady's hand by Justin Smith, who just talked about, it. I'm getting there, but we're not getting it done. And is grabbed by a Patriots offensive lineman and a penalty marker is thrown. Logan Mankins. They're in the middle of it. Let's if see it, what happens. If it happens. was a pass, he's an illegal receiver. If it's a fumble, he's fine. Now, what will the interpretation be? Illegal touch of a four pass. Offense number seven.
Is Smith, who just we heard from in his uh, wireless microphone commentary, talking about getting to the quarterback, finally gets there and it goes up in the air. Let's see what the Bengals are asking here. Illegal touch of a four pass, offense number seven. The pill is declined. Second down. First, it's a natural reaction. Second, it's the smart thing. Don't let a Bengal get a pick or anything like that. Much rather take the penalty than the disaster. The illegal touching rule for offensive linemen was adjusted a little bit this year for the accidental situations where you're going to a guy, but a ball up in the air, that is still living by the old rule of illegal touching. And Mankins did a good job of giving himself up rather than trying to roll the ball and possibly get it knocked out of his hands. Second and 19, and up 14, is there any surprise in your mind that they were running four times in a row, or throwing it, I should say, four times in a row? Now five with Dante Stallworth. I guess not. To the 32 yard line, first down. You figure they just line up and run it here to kill clock, but they're doing it via the air. Well, if, if you see what the Bengals are doing defensively, you know, they're loading up the box, they're trying to stop the run. They've got those one on one isolation routes on the outside. With these receivers, I mean, it's like pitch and catch. It's like seven on seven, as we say in practice, uh, when there are no defensive linemen rushing the quarterback. Gain of 23 there. Well, Stallworth was another one of the additions in the offseason. And Welker, I think people Stallworth, <laughs> Moss, a whole new receiving core paying off. And people expected more from Stallworth, but a knee injury missed 30 practice sessions when they were installing the offense. So he's been a little slower to get with the program, but catching up here, a gain of eight. Let's follow up on, on what Susie said with, with John Thornton being the defensive captain, saying that when they have bad games, they have really bad games. Jaws, you brought up uh, the bend but don't break theory of defense, and here's what the captain said for us. It's either hard as a rock or we break. We don't have any bend in there. <laughs> and now you're watching, they had the Patriots pretty far back, almost trapped, and then a couple of plays, bang, zoom, they're all the way down the field again. They are bending and they are breaking. Yeah, you can't have that. Odd for a captain to say <laughs> that. that was my point, right? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> he was honest. Yes. Sammy Morris into the secondary, into the 20-yard line. We had mentioned Frosty Rucker a series ago, a young defensive lineman for Cincinnati who had not seen the field much this year. He has uh, checked in as they get some fresh bodies in here in this fourth quarter. Rucker was inactive the first three weeks of the season, coming off the hamstring injury. And Mike Sammy Morris had a terrific night here and don't forget the offensive line they have been dominant Matt Light Logan Mankins Dan Coppin Russ Hoxstein Nick Kayser they are winning the line of scrimmage if you control the line of scrimmage you're going to have football games like we're having right now. Back to Morris former Buffalo Bill Miami Dolphins. At this point, it's a very talented football team, but the commandable going 16 and 0. I, I just, I don't see it happening. As good as they are. Well, here's what they're not going to be: 0 and 3 or 0 and 4. All right, and with every successive week, the question gets louder, as it did for the Colts a few years ago. You know, you look at this team, the way they're playing, granted, they have not played any great team so far. At Dallas, at the Colts, do they win those games? <laughs> <laughs> Jaws, come on I now. don't have a crystal ball here to tell if they're going to win. a month away. They're going to know what could happen in between. You know, it's Will so and I have to talk about this every day. <laughs> That's why you're on the air five days a week. He's on one day a week. <laughs> I gotta answer that. <laughs> the hypothetical. It's in the wind. <laughs> Look, third and five, timeout yeah. taken by New England. It's so early in the piece. Right. Don Shula and Greasy and all those dolphins from the end of the season, they haven't even bought the champagne right. yet to put on ice and drink the first they time. Better get a, they better get ready, is all I'm saying, okay? We have third down coming. Pats at the 15 yard line. Tom Brady. Over 75% completions for four consecutive weeks. That would tie if it holds up the NFL record when throwing at least 20 passes, completing 75% in four consecutive games. Kurt Warner and Carson Palmer. Palmer did it at the end of 04, the start of 05. And Brady adds to his numbers. So too does Randy Moss. NFL leader, seven touchdown receptions in the first four weeks. That's the trade of the year. 
Is it not? Randy Moss coming to the Patriots the, for a fourth it's round the trade pick. of the century. Here you'll see the Bengals come with pressure. You're going to get Leon Hall singled up. He, he pretty much whiffs on the jam to the line of scrimmage. This is pitch and catch for Tom Brady and Randy Moss. That fourth round pick better be real good. <laughs> <laughs> he better be real good. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you're going to press Randy Moss, and this is the one area where I think he's most improved since he's come here to New England. He can get off the bump. It used to be one of his liabilities in his game. Now he doesn't have a liability. The first round pick was already in the 07 draft, and as a guy who has not played for the Raiders yet, they should have gone for two so they can get 38 points for a fourth consecutive game. <laughs> Moss over 100 yards for the fourth game this season. Here's Michelle. Well, you guys are talking about that trade for Moss. Before it was consummated, the Patriots brought Moss up to Foxborough to meet with team owner Bob Kraft. I talked with Kraft on the field tonight, not only about this incredible athleticism he acquired, but the conversation he had with Moss to make sure he was getting the right guy. He said he was struck by this. Look at the passion. Look at the team work. He said he's passionate. He's smart. He took a haircut, giving up $9.7 million for $3 million for the contract. Kraft told me lots of players say it's not about the money, it's about respect. But with Randy, it was about winning. I take people as I find them when I look them in the eye. And what I saw looking Randy Moss in the eye was how smart and dedicated he is. And, you know, these teammates in New England agree. Randy Moss is, is a lighthearted guy in the locker room. Uh, right now they're winning, so everything's good, and it's easy to say, well, everything's good. What happens when it goes bad? But what you hear again and again is how smart Randy Moss is and how much of a team player he's become. I, I think Bill Belichick and, and Tom Brady are the super nannies of the NFL. <laughs> super guys. nanny, there you go. <laughs> wow. Fourth 100-yard game of the season, 50th of his career, ties Don Maynard, third on the all-time list behind the incomparable Jerry Rice and Marvin Harrison. Returned by Glenn Holt. 24-yard line, Willie Andrews joins Larry Izzo, three-time Pro Bowl special teamer on the team. <laughs> Buffalo just down the road from Binghamton, I might add. It's a long road. It's a New York <laughs> six, five hours on the throughway just down the road. What, you got friends coming in from Binghamton University? Pushman's out of the yeah. grab, a gain of 16. Jaws homecoming game, too. He's from That's Western right. New York. So Lackawanna High School. Lackawanna High School. So Randy Moss, back home. with his uh, success tonight, four times, 100 yards. It's the first time in the history of the National Football League that a player has gone over 100 in each of his first four games with his team. And Homer intercepted for the second time tonight by Randall Gay. At the 46-yard line. And the Bengals will have a familiar ring to them because they will be, again, the last place Cincinnati Bengals. They'll be one and three and at the bottom of the AFC North. To follow up on what Michelle said about Randy Moss, because, you know, everything is going very, very well right now. And you don't know what's going to happen when it goes bad. But it's possible, Jaws, it doesn't go bad here. I agree. In New England, hey, it doesn't go bad. This has been you know? an incredible performance by the New England Patriots. This is a complete football team. There is not a weakness on this team. On the offensive side of the ball, they can run. They're starting and, running back. And look what, he's, look what he's done. All the wide receivers contribute. Tom Brady's one of the best. But he's the best that Tom Brady's ever had to work with. He's got maybe the, the best grouping of wide receivers he's ever had to work with. No, not I don't think. I know. It's the best group he's ever had. He's now we could talk about MVP for Tom Brady. That's kind of what I'm thinking rather than undefeated. Tom Brady's won everything. Super Bowls, 77% of his games, not the MVPs on his way. That carry, by the way, was by Kyle Eckel, number 38, activated today. The young man who went to Navy, served his two years of military service, cut by the Dolphins in preseason, picked up by the Patriots in their practice squad. And Bill Belichick, all those Naval Academy players mean so much to him. His dad, Steve. Coach was at the Naval Academy as a coach. Bill grew up in Annapolis. And Kyle Echol makes his first NFL carry on a night that Randy Moss and the Patriots get on national TV and say, we're pretty darn good. <laughs> and part of Kenny and Scott on SportsCenter after the game, the GMC Monday Night Football postgame report are the Packers playoff bound. Chris Berman, Bill Parcells, Keyshawn Johnson go inside that. And Kobe Bryant explains why he'll be choosing his words carefully 
this season on SportsCenter after the game. One more Kyle Echo carry as uh, Tom Brady is out and done. Matt Castle's coming to quarterback. And here are Brady's final numbers. That's below his uh, or season numbers now. Jawsy had a below average night. Yeah, I know it was only 78% complete. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been like a career high for me. <laughs> wow. He is playing it at such an incredible level. He looks so comfortable. He has command of this offense. He loves that shotgun formation. We talked at the top of the show. 66% of his passes coming out of the shotgun formation. He had a big smile on his face yesterday. We talked to him about that shotgun formation. And you can see he's very comfortable when he's away from center. Injured Cincinnati Bengal defensive lineman. One more injury. Some perspective on Tom Brady. Played his 100th career game. His 98th career start tonight. We're going to give him the win at this point, okay? Yes. So he has 74. If he wins his next two, he'll tie Roger Staubach for the most wins in NFL history. First 100 starts of your career. You have to be on a good team, and you have to be very good. And he's both. And when we asked Bill Belichick, who, as I mentioned, his dad was coaching at Navy. At the time, Bill was a young man. He doesn't remember a lot of the specific stuff. But certainly remembers Staubach and his presence. And I said, are there comparisons? And he said, Roger Staubach was always a hard worker. He fit in with the rest of the team. You didn't know there was any star quality about him on his way to winning the Heisman at uh, Navy. And Tom Brady's the same way. As Belichick said, you go ask the guys in the equipment room, in the weight room, go ask the trainers. Who's in there with the linemen? Who's the last guy doing weights? Who's the hardest worker? Tom Brady. And so similar parallels, not just in success, but also the way success has been reached with Roger Staubach, one of the greats in NFL history. Castle hands to Eckel. Not only is Tom Brady a hard worker, but get a load of these magazine <laughs> covers, okay? Boys in your wheelhouse Chris, now. Christian Foria once said, men want to be him, women want to be with him. All right? I asked Brady about this whole thing, and he said, I don't go out a lot. I like working. I like playing football. I like being with my family. I try not to give people things to talk about. And I said, yeah, but things happen. And he said, you're telling me? <laughs> He's in the news a lot. As a dad and for the people that he dates, all that stuff. He's in the news all the time. Yeah. Sounds like a man crush, doesn't it, Jaws? He's, and it, I know it is. you've it, got one. I love him as a football <laughs> player. Hey, I, I can watch Tom Brady every single day. He understands the quarterback position. Well, what the Patriots are about to do is historic. They are going to win their first four games here by 20 or more points. In NFL history, it's only happened once to win by 20 or more each of your first four games. The 1920 Buffalo All-Americans did Ooh. that. <laughs> and at that point, the first year of the league, you were allowed to play non-league teams. So they did it in part against non-league teams. Like high school teams? Yeah. <laughs> they play? So this is really historic wow. stuff for wow. Randy Moss, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the New England Patriots who win 34 to 13. A reminder, Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. The Bengals will fall to one and three behind Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Cleveland. The Patriots, a month into the season, have a three-game lead in the AFC East. With Ron Jaworski, Tony Kornheiser, Michelle, Tuf Michelle Tafoya, that's her name, Susie Cobber, and the rest of our crew, Mike Tirico. Good night from Cincinnati. Bills Cowboys next week. See you in Buffalo.